Hi, in today's video I'm going to explain the difference between class A, class B and class AB power amps. And I'm also going to talk about the difference between push-pull and single-ended output stages. Let's start with single-ended class A. This is the simplest amplifier output topology. You have a single device, a valve or a transistor, powered by a supply with voltage Vs and connected to a load RL. In the case of a transformer coupled amplifier, you should think of RL as being the reflected impedance of the load onto the primary side of the output transformer. In class A configuration, you would have an idle bias current, IB, flowing through the device at all times, which sets an operating point for maximum allowable signal swing and power delivery to the load. When a signal appears at the input, an alternating current, IL, is superimposed on the bias current, which then drives the load. Graphically, we can plot the DC bias current as a straight line, with the load current superimposed on it, like this. Let's denote the peak signal swing by delta IL. Then delta IL is limited on the bottom by the bias current, below which the device cuts off, and at the top by the slope of the AC load line, which is the supply voltage divided by the load at least in the case of a transformer coupled amplifier. A transformer allows for a voltage swing of twice the supply voltage. The available swing would be half that with no transformer present. Let's check the efficiency of a single-ended class A amplifier. The input power is the average current drawn from the supply multiplied by the supply voltage, which is just the bias current times the supply voltage. The output power is the square of the RMS load current times the load, which is delta IL squared times the load divided by 2. Using our two upper bounds for delta IL, we can deduce that the efficiency, that is the output power divided by the input power, can never be greater than 50%. In practice, it will be significantly less than that. In a single-ended class A amp, the output device conducts for the full 360 degrees of the signal. The meaning of this will become clear later. If it uses an output transformer, the transformer has to be very big and heavy to handle the static DC bias current. The efficiency is very low. A constant average power is demanded from the supply. This means the power supply needs to be up to the task, which generally means another big and heavy transformer. But a side effect of this is that the dynamic response must be good, that is, there is no sag. Probably the worst property of a class A amp is that at idle an enormous amount of power is being wasted, equal to the bias current times the supply voltage. For the above reasons, a single-ended class A design is only really suitable for a very low-powered amp. Now let's look at push-pull class A. In this topology you have two devices set up in a clever way so that they can drive the load together, with each supplying half the load current. You again have a bias current that sets the operating point for maximum linear signal swing. When an alternating signal is presented to the input, a corresponding alternating current, I prime, is superimposed on the bias current of the top device, and its inverse appears on the bottom device, as shown. The load current is then twice I prime. To see this graphically, let's call the top device U1 and the bottom U2. The top vertical axis represents the current through U1, and the bottom the current through U2. The load current is IL. Let's draw in the lines for the bias current and twice the bias current, and mirror them on the U2 side. The U1 current is centered around the bias point and has half the swing of the load current. The U2 current is shown in blue. The difference between the two is the load current. From this picture, it's clear that delta IL is bounded by twice the bias current. In push-pull class A, two devices are needed, and both conduct for 360 degrees of the signal. Half the bias current is needed compared to a single-ended amp. The output devices can have lower ratings, as they are subject to half the current, and also half the voltage, at least in the case of a transformer-coupled amp. A centre-tapped output transformer can be used with DC bias current set to cancel out, which means a significantly smaller transformer can be used. 
even all the harmonics generated in the output stage cancel out. If you want even harmonics, you'll have to get them from the preamp stage. No big deal. The efficiency, though higher than a single ended amp, is still low. The main reason is that a constant average power is demanded from the supply, regardless of the output power. This means, like before, a large power transformer, good dynamic response, and wasted power of IB times VS at idle. Here IB can theoretically be half what it was in the single-ended case though, so push-pull is more efficient. A class B amp is necessarily a push-pull amp, so again there are two devices working together to drive the load. However, in class B, the devices are biased at the point of cutoff, so that at idle there's no current flowing from the supply, and no power wasted. Now when a signal appears at the input, the top device conducts for just 180 degrees of the signal, the positive portion. The bottom device conducts during the remaining 180 degrees, or the negative portion. The load current is the difference between the two. The input power is the average of the half wave current times the supply voltage. This is delta IL times VS over pi. The output power is delta IL squared times RL over 2. Delta IL is bound by the supply voltage over twice the load, the slope of the AC load line. The efficiency can then be calculated to be bounded by pi over 4, or 78%. This is a theoretical upper bound. In practice, it would be more like 50 or 60%, if you're lucky. In class B, both devices conduct for just 180 degrees of the signal. There will be crossover distortion at the point where one device cuts off and the other starts conducting. There is no wasted power at idle. The same benefits of a push-pull amp apply here over a single-ended amp. A smaller output transformer can be used and even order distortion cancels. The efficiency is reasonable as no power is wasted at idle. The power supply demand increases with the signal, and this means it's possible to make the response saggy if that's what you want. A class AB amp is a cross between a push-pull class A amp and a class B amp. There is a bias current flowing at idle, but instead of setting the operating point in the linear region for maximum signal swing, the operating point is set slightly above cutoff to soften the crossover distortion. When a signal is presented to the input, Corresponding currents are induced around the bias points of the devices U1 and U2. They are best described graphically. As before, we'll draw the load current first and show the bias current, as well as twice the bias current, both for U1 and U2. Initially, both devices are conducting IB, and so the difference is zero. Then, as the signal increases, U1 pushes current while U2 pulls, each providing half the load current. U2 reaches cutoff when U1 reaches twice IB. At this point, U1 provides the full load current until the load current drops again below twice IB, when U2 can then help out again. This is what the device currents look like in class AB. Note. If the peak load current was completely below twice IB, then the stage would operate in push-pull class A. It transitions to class B as the load current increases beyond two times IB. The shaded area is the class A region, and the non-shaded area is the class B region. In class AB, both devices conduct for more than 180 degrees, but less than the full cycle. There is less severe crossover distortion than in class B because of this. There is some wasted power at idle corresponding to the bias current times the supply voltage, but it is acceptable if the bias current can be kept low. The same benefits of a push-pull amp apply to class AB, that is, a smaller output transformer compared to a single-ended transformer coupled amp and cancellation of even order distortion. The efficiency is reasonable, typically around 50%. Power supply demand increases with the signal in the class B region of operation, so some sag can be designed in 
if desired. Well, I hope that all made sense. In a future video, I want to delve more deeply into crossover distortion, what it is, what it sounds like, and how to reduce it. If you'd be interested in that or more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Check me out on Instagram at Rajaniamps. Check me out online at rajaniamps.com. And I hope to see you next time.